Hi and welcome back to Online Linguistics. Today, we are going to cover the first theory of language acquisition, which is behaviorism. At the end of the video, you will know more about behaviorism. What do we mean by association and behaviorism, classical conditioning, operance conditioning, and what are the limitations of behaviorism, and also behaviorism and second language teaching. The theory of behaviorism was a predominant framework for explaining human and animal learning behavior prior to the 1970s. It attempted to explain learning without reference to thinking or mental processes. The behaviorist psychologists Ivan Pavlov and B.F. Skinner developed their theories while carrying out a series of experiments on animals. They observed that rats and birds could perform various tasks by encouraging habit forming. Researchers rewarded desirable behavior, this was known as positive reinforcement, and desirable behavior was punished or simply not rewarded with. For them, learning is based on conditioning and habit formation. While conditioning is a process of developing connections between a stimulus and a response, which means a connection between a sound, for example, to a behavior, or a reaction and habit formation means that when you reinforce or reward a behavior the habit is formed we will elaborate more on that through these two fundamental forms of associative learning by the two influential figures in the field of psychology Ivan Pavlov and B.F. Skinner first let's have a look on classical conditioning by Ivan Pavlov classical conditioning is a way people and animals learn to associate two things together, even if they didn't naturally have a connection. It involves making a mental link between something that happens and a reaction to it. Let's say you have a dog, and every time you bring out the dog's food bowl, you also ring a bell. Initially, the sound of the bell means nothing to the dog. However, after repeating this many times, something interesting happens. At first, when you ring the bell, the dog doesn't react much because the bell sound doesn't mean anything special to it. But as you continue this routine, the dog starts to connect the bell sound with food. It learns that when the bell rings, food is coming. After a while, when you ring the bell, even without food, the dog might start to get excited and salivate because it now associates the bell sound with the getting food. So, in classical conditioning, the dog has learned to link the bell, which was originally meaningless to it, with the food, creating a new reaction to the bell. This is how classical conditioning works. It's about forming connections in the mind between things that weren't initially connected. Now, let's jump to operant conditioning by B.F. Skinner. Let's start by an example elaborating on this first. Imagine you have a pet parrot and you are trying to teach it to say hello. Here is how operant conditioning might work. Every time your parrot says hello, you give it a treat and attention. Your parrot likes these rewards, so it starts saying hello more often than to get them. So, it starts saying hello more often to get them. This is called positive reinforcement. When your parrot makes other sounds or doesn't say hello, you don't give it any treat or attention. This is like saying, if you don't say hello, nothing special happens. This is called negative reinforcement. If your parrot starts squeaking loudly or being noisy at night, and you cover its cage for a little while, it learns that being quiet is better because it avoids being covered, and that's called punishment. However, there are two types of punishment. There is positive punishment and negative punishment. For instance, the extra homework that you give to your student is a positive punishment, while neglecting him, avoiding him, or prohibiting him from the break and playing with his friends is a negative punishment. So, in operant conditioning, 
the parrot learns to do more of what gets rewarded and less of what doesn't get rewarded. So, as well as avoiding behaviors that lead to punishments. It's all about learning from the consequences of its actions. Skinner suggested that a child imitates the language of its parents or caretakers. Successful attempts are rewarded because an adult who recognizes a word spoken by a child praise the child or give it what it is asking for. Successful utterances are therefore reinforced while unsuccessful ones are forgotten. Skinner suggested that a child imitates the language of its parents or caretakers. Successful attempts are rewarded because an adult who recognizes a word spoken by a child will raise the child or give it what it is asking for. Successful utterances are therefore reinforced while unsuccessful ones are forgotten. Learning learning is a result of environmental rather than genetic factors. The child is born as a clean slate and the environment writes its messages on this clean slate, according to Skinner. While there must be some truth in Skinner's explanation, there are many objections to it. Language is based on a set of structures or rules, which could not be worked out simply by imitating individual utterances. The mistakes made by children reveal that they are not simply imitating but actively working out and applying rules. For example, a child who says drink instead of drank is not copying an adult but rather over applying a rule. The child has discovered that past tense verbs are formed by adding a D or T sound. The mistakes occur because there are regular verbs which do not behave in this way. Such forms are often referred to as intelligent mistakes or virtuous errors. The vast majority of children go through the same stages of language acquisition. There appears to be a definite sequence of steps. We refer to developmental milestones. Apart from certain extreme cases, the sequence seems to be largely unaffected by the treatment the child receives or the type of society in which she or he grows up. Children are often enabled to repeat what an adult says, especially if the adult utterance contains a structure the child has not yet started to use. The classic demonstration comes from the American psychologist. The structure in question here involves negative verbs. Where the child goes, nobody don't like me. The mother says, no, say, nobody likes me. Nobody don't like me. No, now listen carefully. Say, nobody likes me. Oh, nobody don't likes me. There is evidence of a critical period for language acquisition. Children who have not acquired language by the age of about seven will never entirely catch up. The most famous example is that of Jenny, discovered in 1970s at the age of 13. She had been severely neglected, brought up in isolation, and deprived of normal human contact. Of course, she was disturbed and underdeveloped in many ways. During subsequent attempts at a rehabilitation, her carers tried to teach her to speak. Despite some success, mainly in learning vocabulary, she never became a fluent speaker failing to acquire the grammatical competence of the average of five years old. Now we'll move on to behaviorism and second language acquisition. It had a powerful influence on second and foreign language teaching between the 1940s and 1970s, causing the development of the audiolingual method. Instruction is to elicit the desired response from the learner who is presented with a target stimulus and students as passive receivers of information memorize dialogues and sentences patterns by heart. So it's a stimulus response reinforcement. Learners are taught the language in small sequential steps, the stimulus, 
the learner responds by repeating or substituting. This is followed by the feedback of the teacher. By repeating, the learner develops habits. Learning a language is seen as acquiring a set of appropriate mechanical habits. Errors are not tolerated because they lead to the development of bad habits. An explanation is avoided because learning is simply habit formation, not problem solving. The role of the teacher is to develop in learners good language habits. If you like the video, please subscribe, leave a comment and thanks for watching.